On the first few flight lessons with a new IFR student, we typically start off by flying VFR flights using the hood to introduce instrument flying without having to deal with working in the IFR system. This is because once we're flying IFR, procedures and communications get difficult, and we try to introduce this a bit later in training. The first concept instrument students learn in this environment is copying down and reading back clearances. We use the CRAFT acronym to organize the order that an IFR clearance will be given to us and make it easier to read back to the controller. Still, it helps to do some practice, so let's run through a few scenarios at different airports. Feel free to practice along with us, pausing where necessary to write down a clearance and then read back the clearance as you'd be expected to. We'll start at College Park. We're planning to fly IFR to Luray. We filed a route with two intermediate waypoints, Belts and Lucky, just to stay north of the flight restricted zone and the big traffic at Dulles. At College Park, a non-towered airport, the procedure for getting an IFR clearance is listed in the chart supplement. We'll be calling Potomac Approach on our phone to do so. Let's hear how that'll go. We'll leave out the dialogue subtitles, and we won't write down the clearance elements in real time to give you a chance to practice if you want to. We'll start with a phone call. They'll pick up and say, Mount Vernon flight data. We'll say, November 518 Foxtrot Tango, looking to pick up IFR to Luray. And they'll say, I have a full route clearance. Advise when you're ready to copy. They say, ready to copy. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, clear to Luray Caverns Airport, radar vectors Kilo Romeo Alpha November Tango, Victor 265, Yankee Alpha November November India, Whiskey Oscar Oscar Lima Yankee, Martinsburg, direct destination, maintain 2000, expect 6000, one zero minutes after departure, departure frequency 125.65, squawk 4623, hold for release. And now here's how we should have written down that clearance. Now we can get ready to read it back. Clear to Luray Caverns via radar vectors direct to Krant, Victor 265, Yanni, Woolley, Martinsburg, direct destination. Maintain 2000, expect 6000, departure on 125.65, squawk 4623, hold for release. We got a ton of waypoints we didn't file, so hopefully we got them all written down for the readback, and we'll expect to hear this from the controller. Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango, read back correct. Which runway will you be departing from and how long until you're ready to go? And we'll tell them we'll be taking off runway 15 and it'll be about 5 minutes. We'll call you back when we're ready to go. Okay, so this was a smooth interaction, even despite the amendment to our filed route. You can cut down on these route amendments if you use preferred or previously filed routes. We talk more about this in other videos, but this one is just about practicing writing down and reading back. Because this is a non-towered field, ATC needs to know which runway we're going to take off from and when so that they can close the airspace for our departure. So this is why we were asked, and if we said we were ready to go, they may issue us a release right away, but since we still need to taxi down and do our pre-takeoff checklists, we'll call back when we're ready. So we taxi down to runway 15. We can't depart because we haven't gotten our release from ATC. To get that release, we'll want to call Potomac back on the same number. And we'll want to keep our scratch pad handy to write down our release information. So they pick up the phone and they say, Mount Vernon. And they say, this is Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. We're number one and ready at runway 15 at College Park. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, you're released for departure on entering controlled airspace. Fly heading 320. Clearance void if not off within five minutes. Call back within one zero minutes and advise intentions. So that's our release. We'll read that back by saying enter controlled airspace, heading 320, and clearance void in five minutes. So we're now good to go. Notice our new instruction is to fly 320. This is not a radar vector. It's just our starting point when we enter controlled airspace, aka class E airspace beginning at 700 feet AGL. Once we're off the ground and have contacted ATC, they'll issue us a radar vector to join the route we were given in the clearance. Okay, so that's a non-towered field with a route amendment. Let's try a different example. We're now at the FBO at Raleigh-Durham International, a Class C airport. This time, we've done our homework and picked out a route to our destination, Richmond Executive, that was previously issued by ATC. At a towered airport, we'll contact air traffic control to pick up our IFR clearance. At the Charlie Airport, there'll be a dedicated clearance delivery frequency. Here, it's 120.1. Let's listen to the exchange for this scenario. Raleigh clearance, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, picking up IFR to Richmond Exec. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, Raleigh clearance. Cleared to Richmond Executive Airport, Raleigh 1 departure, then is filed. Maintain 2000, expect 8,010 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 125.3, squawk 3157. 
So here comes our readback. Clear to Richmond Executive Airport, Raleigh 1 departure, then as filed, maintain 2000, expect 8,010 minutes after departure, departure frequency 125.3, squawk 3157. Cessna 8 Fox Track Tango, read back correct. Okay, so we got our route as filed with the addition of a SID, a radar departure to the Raleigh 1. At large airports like this, we'll typically get at least a radar departure like this to give us an initial heading to maintain and expect a radar vector from departure once we're airborne. There's no hold for release instruction here. The release will be coordinated by tower. Our next step is to contact ground for taxi instructions just as we would on any flight out of a towered airport. Make sure you've kept the record of what you've actually filed. If ATC just clears you as filed and you don't actually remember or have written down what you filed, you'll have to ask for the route to be spelled out again. Let's move down to Miami Executive and look at a clearance involving a SID and a transition. We've filed to Jacksonville International. The route will be a departure and a transition flowing into an arrival at Jacksonville. This is a Delta Airport, but this one happens to have a dedicated clearance delivery frequency on 133.0. Most other deltas are small enough that clearance is going to be handled by ground. Here's what it sounds like here. Tamiami clearance, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, IFR to Jacksonville. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, Tamiami clearance, cleared to Jacksonville International Airport, Doral 1 departure, Matlock transition, then as filed. Climb via the SID, squawk 4216. You may notice some things appear to be missing or not quite as you expected. Anyways, here's the read back. Clear to Jacksonville International Airport. Doral 1 departure, Matlock transition, then as filed, climb via the SID, squawk 4216. Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango, read back correct. Okay, first surprise, there's no altitude spelled out. We're used to hearing something like maintain 2000, expect 8000, 10 minutes after departure. Instead, we got climb via the SID. Well, the departure plate has all the altitude information we need. The procedure for all runways is to cross Lifer at 4000. So that's what our initial climb will be to. Sometimes ATC will still issue an expected altitude with our clearance, but we didn't get that here. Next, there was no frequency. Again, the departure plate helps. There's only one frequency listed, 125.5, so that's what we use. Sometimes ATC will still issue the frequency, but many airports won't do this ever. Don't be airborne and told to switch over to departure only to have to fumble for the frequency. Fill in the missing piece of that craft acronym here. If you found this clearance practice helpful, let us know in the comments and we'll do some more videos with different kinds of IFR clearances to practice on. Also, we have a new way for you to show your support for our channel. Check out the thanks option a few spots to the right of the thumbs up buttons. Your support for Flight Insight will keep us making videos every Tuesday and Friday for a long time coming. And be sure to check out our full ground schools at flight-insight.com.